so okay so this video is basically this this video is basically based on a problem that uh, a student researchers lab practitioners and some young scientists that who are having some research experience or training often encounter a, prob a problem anybody who is doing research in material science biological science or chemical science or the interdisciplinary or any interface of any sciences generally face the problem of solubility solubility is such a common problem solubility solubility is a very common problem that is often been encountered by even a high school laboratory students that who are taking practical classes in the lab in a school or universities or who are doing research or practicing research in, in some industrial or commercial spaces this is the problem that is often found to be a bothering one for biologists chemists or even doing people who are in material science so i am today today i will try to uh, uh, so try to resolve some of the issues related to the solubility problem and give you a broad picture give you a general broad picture that will help you assess the solubility of any any material any material of chemical origin and be it uh, be it uh, be it uh, uh, effort or direction of doing um, test or laboratory routine laboratory work or research work or even those student who are doing ncert books and they are going through main group elements the one of the common physical feature of the metal salts generally they are often found uh, quite puzzling because something dissolves and something doesn't something follows this patterns of solubility something follows that patterns of solubility something dissolves in aqueous solvent something dissolves in a non aqueous solvent something protic something aprotic this kind of lot of fuzziness about the solubility we will often fail so and and there are other issues as well because all people does not often uh, find solubility but there are other terms similar to this solubility like miscibility miscibility mixture dissolution dissolution these are the common terms that is often been encountered by students and researchers researchers that is troubling sometimes if you are not properly aware with this phenomena so i would try to simplify it although it's not simple basically it's not simple that's why it's too much puzzling but i will try to give some thematic idea about the picture of the whole solubility that could help you to assess the solubility before you are trying to uh, uh, to mix this thing into this thing and whether it will soluble or not soluble because there is a common question people generally fail so this is the basically uh, some time it become a problem of a hurdle kind but once you are aware with the some basic fundamental principles that solubility solubility uh, takes up to this is not such such a big issue so let me write down the solubility and its type and its type solubility basically solubility is the ability ability of what of any substance substance to get mixed with any solvent any solvent so this is basically ability on the part of solute or substance to get mixed or dissolved with any substance to in which it is being dissolved subjected for dissolution like the common example that we often see of solubility in our daily experiment experience or like this there are two beakers there are two beaker
it is full of what water it is full of organic solvent organic solvent like ether benzene like this benzene and if i try to put ethanol and all of course they will be on this side the general classification of these solvents are polar protic solvent you may call it in a convenient terms of classification otherwise there are other issues as well with this kind of classification but yes of course at some level you can say like this these are non protic non protic non protic polar or non polar solvent non polar solvent so these are basically these two solvent and if you add to it a common thing nacl and to this benzene or phenol or other organic compound and you try to observe the behavior you will find if you add this chunk of crystal of nacl it will get it will disappear with pass of time disappear disappear and it will be single phase single phase homogeneous solution let us take word by word what do you mean by single phase there is no other phase associated it means it is there is no solid no liquid no gas everything is liquid that is a single physical state and that is what liquid state everything is liquid transparent it will look transparent transparent isn't it and if you do this it will also form single phase single phase single phase homogeneous solution or mixture or mixture so one thing is always here that first thing is the single phase means the liquid state or the gas is a state or the solid state of course solution can be made of any state there is solid state solution there are liquid state solution there are there are gaseous state solution but our common notion of solution is generally limited to liquid state solution because anybody says solution the common picture is emerge in our mind is something liquid this is a solution of sugar and water solution of salt and water solution of mixture or solvent of ethanol and water this kind of things emerge in our picture but yes you must have to understand that solution can be solution can be in any state provided they follow the definitions or the restrictions posed on some systems some chemical systems which directly fall in the category of solution so one common categorization based on this property a differential behavior bi differential behavior i am writing in sorts leads to the differential behavior of substance leads to a three kind of solution that you often form and is start being taught in as elementary books of sciences in a school level school level it's called true solution ka suspension and ka colloidal system colloidal system now it is a one phase system one phase system this is a two phase system and this is also two phase system and then you will find there is a lot of colloidal systems 
aerosols gel other number of shawl a number of colloidal systems that are often been encountered by the people working in material sciences so this 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 is uh, generally the example of colloidal system but colloidal system of characteristics of because the two phase system so what is the two phase disperse phase and disperse medium disperse medium disperse medium but this of course this is also two phase system but to suspension to suspension this terminology of two phase system the disperse medium and disperse phase is generally not applied really not being applied it is restricted to the systems of colloidal kind colloidal kind and how this is being categorized into this system into three of these categories basically this categorization comes from the size of the particles of a solute particles in the system in the system the solute size the particle solute the, the, the size of the solute particle in true suspension in true solution are generally in the nanometer range nanometer range 1 to 100 you may say it's a loose term otherwise you may fix it as a fixed term there is no fixed term because it is generally a range but yes you can say it's generally in a nanometer or angstrom range in suspension system suspension system it becomes little heavier the solute particle become heavier and it turns to tend to the power minus 6 meter or micrometer range and here in the suspension system it will tend to the power even 100 micrometers of range or even even these 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 terms may not be exactly fixed in number but yes dimensions of uh, dimensions are generally nanometer and micrometer range nanometer is unit of the dimensions are in the range of nanometer to micrometer you may check it properly uh, in a books and a standard books but yes my meaning is to convey you that this is generally one phase systems mean was it is like for example solution of what salt and water because when you dissolve the salt the salt loses its complete identity and it's no longer a salt particle so there is no issue in second system suspension system like if you if you if you give if you add a soil a soil into a water solvent so that would become a suspension system because soil particle would not be completely dissolved and you can visibly see you can visibly see the 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 the, the particle the particle um, of solute in a suspension system and in colloidal system generally the particle of the range that you cannot just see them by visible eyes but yes their appearance of a solution system is different so you can guess in that way so um, let me correct myself that colloidal system in the particle size of solute generally follows the order the first in a colloidal system higher the high sorry sorry suspension Higher, <laughs> highest size of particles, and but they are not visible by eyes. And then it comes to a colloidal system, collides, and then finally true solution, true solution. This is the order of the size of the solute particle, solute particle, solute particle. So this is basically two part. This is the two part. This is the part. where any substance where any substance is being mixed with what any solvent solvent of any kind and with the interplay of the forces or the interaction of the solute and solvent it results into a three forms that is called uh, that is called what what we call true solution suspension and colloidal systems colloidal system based upon the degree of dissociation or the degree of dissolution or the particle size or even the nature nature that how they are interacting how they are interacting and one important because these are the preliminary thing that you uh, might be aware of the one thing that you might not be aware of i need to add here is that is that this system this system when when solute or substance interact with the solution system and form true solution 
suspension suspension and what called colloidal system colloidal system the interaction of substance substance means solute with solvent is different is different this is the point i want to highlight it, it to you that is often not portrayed in 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 standard textbooks but this is the fact this is the fact this true solution true solution is generally is a result of interaction between the solvent and solute that is generally of chemical nature chemical interaction or chemical forces involved chemical forces are involved here in this two these two system physical forces are involved involved physical forces are involved physical forces are specifically if you try to say the suspension they are generally mechanical systems mechanical systems means you can just separate the solute from solvent by mechanical means or just simply by filtering it out you can filter it but you cannot filter out the solute particles dissolve in colloidal system colloidal system from its dispersed medium in most of the cases in most of the cases the point to be mentioned here so and yes but the these terminology the chemical folk interaction or physical interaction or mechanical squad of interaction is not very strict it's not very strict honestly to say you it's not very strict because even true solution can be made up by pure purely physical interaction physical interactions can also result into some true solution form let's say if you dissolve if you dissolve any cl here the case any cl if you dissolve any cl with water what happen it get dissolved and any plus molecule is get hydrated by h2 o molecule x is net positive charge plus what call next cl minus is also get hydrated by h2 o minus i am writing up some entity that might confuse you little with something called a formation of coordination complexes and which is incorrect to copy card as here i am also writing some species like this as to in a form as it looks like that is a coordination complex but it is not it is not a true coordination complex x because x is not here fixed is not fixed is not constant is not fixed con fixed coordination number is not a fixed coordination number here okay it may vary it may vary based on what it may vary based on the size or potential sigma called size by charge a by q charge by size ratio this is called ionic potential this is governed by this this is nothing have to do with the valency of sodium metal atom so in in, in just let put it in a different way my mean is to say let's say if the sodium plus molecule in a water here sodium here if it is hydrated by 6 by 6 molecule here by 6 molecule here just to give you a false picture of coordination complex coordination based upon this charge by size ratio but it is not complex because the interaction here is not chemical bond formation chemical bond formation 
is not possible here. It's not actually happening here. It was possible, but not happening here. Which is the counter case in a case of transition metal. If you replace this sodium metal, this iron plus two salt means in place of NaCl, you are dissolving what? Fe2SO4. This way of convenient picturization that how this metal ion, transition metal ion, or transition metal ion, or alkali metal ion getting hydrated, and this hydration will lead to the formation of coordination complex. Coordination complex. Actually, thing that happens in solvation, in solution making, is same, but the extents and definition is different. I'm just let me give you a picture. What happened? I am bringing you to the town. Let's say, if you put, if you put what? Sodium salt in a water. Sodium salt in a water. Na get dissociated. Na will be hydrated. Hydrated by what? Layers of water. It's layered hydration. What is called? Layered hydration. Hydration. And if you replace this sodium with iron metal, this will also go layered hydration. It's also undergo the same layered hydration. But the first layer of hydration with this ligand and with this ligand called water or solvent will be of different. This will be held here by simply physical forces. That is what Coulombic forces. forces or in a language of a chemical science or chemistry language, you may say that it is what iron dipole force, iron dipole force, essentially a Coulombic force, but in disciplinary language it is called intramolecular force, intramolecular force, okay. So this is the process means if you just to do the here the interaction is what? Chemical force, chemical force means here chemical bond formation, chemical bond formation has taken place. Means what will happen in primary layer? This is layer number one, n is equal to one. Layer number one, here x would be fixed, x, which x? This x, the coordination number. Since this hydration, layered hydration, in which a layer after layer is being added to the iron metal plus two metal, the first layer, the primary layer would be a layer where the chemical bond formation has been has already taken place and that will be governed by the balancey that is being allowed by this metal, transition metal. So this will give a fixed picture, means generally this will form H2O6, this complex, this complex, hexaquarian complex. It is separable, it's stable. And here what will happen? NH2X. This, this is unstable. Just a hydrated complex and it is coordination complex. You can separate it, it's a stable. This is, this has received the CFAC stabilization that is studying coordination chemistry. Means a simple metal, the character of a metal, character of a metal decides the kind of interaction, but after all it will be resulting in a true solution. Both will result in a true solution because both thing has got dissolved. The one has a dissolution by the force of a kind called physical forces and dipole forces and the others has involved the forces of kind of chemical forces or chemical bond formation, but the solution will be solved. That is why I say the true solution, the mixed mixture of two systems, two components is not always made up by chemical bond formation. It may be either by chemical or by physical force. But in AS, essentially a true and true solution in colloidal systems are essentially kind of physical forces, physical forces. And second thing is you would have in electrochemistry, I will try to add all these things together. The one concept you study in electrochemistry, diffusion layer, sliding layer, gliding layer. Diffusion potential. No, there is nothing. When you dissolve in a metal and acid system, the primary layer is a fixed layer. 
these layer are these layer are what diffuse layer they have no fixed number of molecule associated they are moving they are in a constant touch with what called rest of the solution so this form diffusion layer diffusion layer this is the diffusion layer so those who are electrochemist they are generally interested in this part of layer because this diffusion layer decides the potential on the surface of this metal in a solution system in a hydrated form and even those who are studying the conductivity or the transport number of all these things because to the extent the atom is the, the ion is hydrated the behavior corresponding behavior is generally dependent on the degree of hydration and the layers or the radius of hydration circle is generally been taken here so do those who are the people who just do this but the process for an elementary examination the process is simple a dissolution process a metal salt has been put into a water solvent which is a polar you often say you often say in a, in a books that what is the nacl exact state in a water you generally found that nacl 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 when it is dissolved in a water generally form this kind of thing as i have told you and pitch books generally picturize this in a this way that na is an metal ion and there is a what we call water this is h this is h this is negative this is positive this is positive and this is positive well, that's why any water molecule bit itself orient itself toward this metal in this fashion this fashion and this will be what we call it electrostatic attraction attraction this is basically a coulombic attraction that's a coulombic attraction means it is nothing there is, there is no chemical bond formation it is simply a coulombic attraction between what two charges q1 physics student may pay attention to q1 or q2 that's why you often anybody who is just dealing with this solution property of any any solvent system they often try to mention dielectric constant dielectric constant ask or not they often ask what is the dielectric constant of the solution you are talking water is a universal solvent because its dielectric constant is much 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 higher than ordinary solvents isn't it reason because the force is a in 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 a language disciplinary language it is called iron dipole force force but essentially it is, is an electrostatic force which is of coulombic force net isn't it and the, if you are considering is an coulombic force you can ignore the dielectric constant of the medium and you know that this force is something called as 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 upon r square and this is the part which is called dielectric constant constant eps not is a permittivity of the medium so you what does it mean means despite of the chemical nature of any 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 solution the physical characteristic of that chemical substance or the chemical uh, solution determines or play a greater role towards its behavior of as a as a, as a behavior of a solvent because if anything it's getting dissolved into it and it is forming this kind of complex and this is the different behavior and that's why if you if you the water is same water is same water is same it is same but you dissolve into it nacl solution nacl salt and fe2 fe2so4 salt the degree of dissolution in the salt will be of different extent that is often reported in gram per liter the gram per liter how this much gram get dissolved into this um, this amount of solvent at constant temperature that's another aspect to discuss later at constant temperature so what happened even some may argue that because uh, this is this is uh, the charge as ionic potential it is singly charged and it is doubly charged so the charge is the same 
charge is different that's why they, they have a differential solubility toward a single solvent system but if i say i say i'm trying to clear your picture better even if the charge is same let's say it's a ca2 plus n ca2 plus n even then the solubility of these two let's say it's a ca so4 now it is same the counter anion is same both fe and ca are di positive na get it even then the solubility of these two salts will be different even then now somebody argue that's a in the charge to size ratio of these two metal ions charge to the of size to these metal ions is different is different that's why they are showing different solubility i say to them even that is the same even then will be the difference then what is the difference? what is the next explanation what is the next explanation next explanation is that just since this metal is what alkali metal and dipositive metal <coughs> this is a transition metal it shows a divalent chemistry d orbital chemistry is displayed by this and this does not show d orbital chemistry and between the display of a this d orbital chemistry this forms a transition metal complex and this do not form the complex of that sort it gets extra stabilizes and it is called cfc stabilization that's why it will get dissolved to greater extent than to this the solubility got tick you no know, isn't it and if they say if this let's suppose that even this metal is of the same behavior it can also assume that can also so what coordination behavior it can so a divalent chemistry divalent chemistry and the divalent chemistry d, d, d orbital chemistry that is being displayed by these two metal is same let's say even the cfc stabilization of these two metal even if it's so calcium even if so it shows that it's the coordination chemistry even if the c coordination behavior is exactly same and the cfi cfsc stabilization energy is released by these two metal is same even then solubility will not be same now it has become more dramatic more interesting isn't it is it it is completely exciting or not even then it will not be same then we will say sir then what is the next explanation that like then is still there is a parameter if the crystal structure of these two caso4 and what faso4 salt is not the same the differential solubility will be obvious isn't it so solubility in that sense what is the meaning of telling all these stories that even if the charge is same charge and potential is same coordination behavior is same the amount you are adding the same solvent system is same solvent system parameters are same temperature is same then why the solubility is differing to this showing this behavior the point or the masses behind this all this botheration to you is that the you already know what you already know is solubility is a complex behavior i am just showing why this is complex because there are too many factors involved for a solubility of any solute to any given solvent that's why it is too complex i am just varying things on one side just solute i am just trying to analyze the the characteristics of a solute and suppose if i try to change if i try to change the solvent behavior let's take the same the same solvent let's take the same solute let's take the fso4 as an salt and vary the solvent vary the solvent then again solvent solute interaction will determine the solubility does feso4 does not dissolve does not dissolve to the same extent in water ethanol or d2o deuterated water or tritium based water or fluorinated water chlorinated water it will does not dissolve to the same extent this is the interesting thing isn't it and if any that is same even the solvent characteristic is same they will also further be subjected to other thermodynamic behaviors because then we have to look at the kinetics and thermodynamics of this process if it is a chemical process or physical process you already know it is the thermodynamics and kinetics kinetics take care how fast something dissolve and thermodynamics will take care of whether it will dissolve or not 
common example of thermodynamic factor influences on solubility of something you often see if you are in a laboratory in a high school laboratory or in a college laboratory and something you are having calcium oxide or calcium sulfate is not it's not soluble because it's at room temperature it is sparingly soluble and you just keep it if you just put it calcium so four uh, calcium sulfate in our test tube and you are checking it is not getting completely a transparent solution and you go to the instructor laboratory instructor and says sir this is not completely solved he said you know just go and just keep it on a burner for a while it will get dissolved you give it heat it will get dissolved and it dissolved and you are amazed because it is the intervention of thermic dynamic parameter called temperature since the process whether be it chemical or physical it is a thermodynamic process and there are something some molecule you add up into something and it got very fast dissolved if you just put a same chunk a big chunk of sugar cube in a solution it will take little time if you just cross it you know make a powder you add to a water solution it will get dissolved at fast isn't it? the kinetic parameters the kinetic factors influencing the rate of dissolution of all this so thermodynamic behavior that solubility is a not just a question is taking into account of the chemical nature of the solute physical nature of the solute chemical and physical nature of the solvent and the process nature of the process itself the kinetic and thermodynamic aspect of the process essentially this is a process so that's why it's become a complex isn't it so tell me so let me come back to the point here so once you see that this interaction is a ion dipole interaction ion dipole interaction i have a bad habit of digressing from the point i am trying to move make so pardon me for that so here uh, the thing is that ki this is ion dipole interaction electrostatic interactions so basically this will be in common let let me put in different way. in common there are three thumb rule are being taught to the students that any salt will be dissolved will be soluble in any so solvent or not the three thumb rule are what there are things things this this generally any there is a any salt let's there is a any salt you know this salt is a crystalline this salt is a crystalline okay and when it get break into this form dissociation dissociation it requires a force work against it requires work against its lattice energy isn't it lattice energy because crystal to break the crystal lattice you require energy and where from did you get this energy you receive this energy from the consequent a subsequent hydration of this ion hydration of this ion because hydration is the process where what positive and negative charge interact and there is a release of energy in the form of heat or something the release of energy and that energy is being utilized to break the lattice of nacl and somebody may ask somebody may ask there's a very interesting question that sir whether the energy is required the first and the first the nacl will break down and they will change into what the change into na plus and then it will get hydrated then it will be what energy will be released so energy demand is a prior necessity followed by this supply so it is what a prepaid business a postpaid business it looks like a postpaid business post payment of energy it looks like na but th this is not like that these process are simultaneous simultaneous it does not happen first every crystal got broken down and there is a free ion floating and then then uh, uh, solvent molecule are getting awakened uh, moms comes and knocks pox them that here is a free ion go and solvate them no it's not like that it the process is a simultaneous simultaneous process that's why generally these prismal are equilibrium process equilibrium process i i willingly put a arrow of what reversibility an equilibrium process this is a equilibrium process both process are working together and there is a there is a action the, the solvent molecule will act on a surface of a lattice they will try to attract and bring 
that one of the uh, element from NaCl crystal out into the sphere, they will try to the next set and they will try to the next set and that's why the crystal size will keep on reducing and you will see that the whole chunk of this salt will get reduced and will finally will disappear. So, this process is quite simultaneous, isn't it? So, this way of this whole process is governed by what we call T del S. This is the thermodynamic control of this, thermodynamic control of what? Dissolution process. So, suppose if, if any process, if any salt you are dissolving and it is what? Hydration energy H E exceeds its lattice energy, it will be what? Soluble. If it is hydrogen energy, it is less than its lattice energy, it will be insoluble. If it H E hydration energy is equal to its lattice energy, it is sparingly soluble. These are three thumb rules are taught in classes, schools, is not it? And suppose, suppose where this energy supply come, teacher tells you that if something, dissolution of something is in what? Exergonic process or exothermic process, which releases energy. I have heard literally it is sparingly solvable. If teacher tells you that go and hit it, it will not dissolve, it will rather revert. Solubility will go down because the process is already exothermic and it is less soluble due to other reasons. It is applicable where the process of dissolution, which is the most case in all generally all phenomena, the most case phenomena, except some exceptions, it is generally the salt dissolution process in endothermic process. And any salt is, 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 is less soluble, you just supply it a heat by heating it on burner or flame, it gets dissolved. So, in case of endothermic process, it gets dissolved. So, process, if delta G is negative, it will spontaneously dissolve. And if delta G is positive, it has to be heated. How it will heat and then dissolve? If delta G is positive, means it is non-spontaneous process and you heat means you supply temp temperature is rising. This factor will dominate in the equation and the overall delta G will return negative and the process will be spontaneous. So, our elevated temperature process will be spontaneous, is not it? And if the lattice energy and CFSC in the case of I said the Fe2 plus n, they contribute here. CFSC and lattice energy has a strong contribution in this equation at this point. And this is how they trick the solubility behavior of any salt. Alright? And phagacity and, and entropical behavior means it is a monopositive ion, it is a dipositive ion, it is a tripositive ion, like if it is a, it is a, uh, it is, it is a Ca SO4 or Ca Cl2 means a dissolution of a single molecule releases 3 molecules or releases just two molecules in NaCl as in the case of NaCl, this will be a factor taken care by the entropy factor, entropy factor. And when we are considering a case, we must have to take into account there is a reasonable similarity between the count salts and the solution systems and we are having a picture of solution in a constant frame. Means when we are trying to examine the solubility of any salt, we have to take into account the dialectic constant of, of any solvent, the, the proticity or the polarity of that solvent, the chemical and physical nature of that solvent, the expansion coefficient of that solvent, the thermodynamic properties, is not it? Okay? And the temperature at, we, at which we are operating, because the same solvent will not behave the same way toward a given solute at all temperatures. It is a certain window, it is a certain range, a certain window in which the solubility phenomena happens. And keeping all these factors into account, this concept called solubility product emerges, which is very important in the group analysis and analysis of metal, quantitative as well as qualitative analysis, the concept of solubility, the process of precipitation phenomena is everything which is governed by the solubility product and that solubility product is being derived or being evaluated 
based on all these factors. So, what I have covered here basically one part this solub solution or the solubility of a salt, salt what kind of salt alkali metal salt and transition metal kind of salt and what things that generally came into picture when something is getting dissolved is not it. The rest part the miscibility what happens when ethanol water is being mixed, mixed? what happens when benzene in ether is being mixed or any organic solvent is being mixed that phenomenon is little different and you even have learned that the two solution when interact with the light suspension interact with the light colloidal system interact with the light they show different behavior different physical behavior the common phenomena called Tyndall effect is being only observed in what only observed in colloidal systems because it requires that process is scattering and that requires a dimension of size to be in a certain range ok. So, this kind of thing is being generally taken care of uh, by all these kind of things. So, when there are three things when you have some chemical nature information of any solute you are dissolving that which kind of salt it is what may be crystal structure what is the, what could be the ionic size if it is being released ok. If you have all this information of the nature of the bonding of that 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 salt suppose there we are comparing salt NaCl from NaI, NaI sodium iodide and sodium chloride we also need to know the nature of the bonding between these two metal and counter and sodium iodine and sodium chlorine because there is appreciable covalent behavior toward in a case of NaI so that solubility will get tweaked then to a, in case of uh, NaCl. So, you also require to know the nature of the bonding of the salt you also are required what is the crystal lattice of the like solubility of NaCl KCl is different due to the crystal structure and people organically got amazed that how is this these things are so different. So, these kind of things when you are aware with the chemical information the information which are pertinent to its chemical nature you are aware you are also aware of the process you are also aware of the kinetics you are aware also about the mechanism of this process then you can have a fair strong judgment about the solubility of the solubility is subject to even other factors the size of the molecule the size of the atom getting size of the size of size, size of the uh, size of the uh, pellet that you are putting in because the nano aspects of that matter for that matter appears into picture and the solubility got further complicated all right so this is the part of this actually i covered the solubility of a salt in a water kind of solvent or you can better say the interaction of a water solvent with generally a common salts common simple salts a double salt or some transition metal salt the other factor the miscibility miscibility the fundamental bond does not takes care of the solute does not respect the solubility product there is no limit to which you can mix ethanol and water but there is a strong limit you can mix NaCl in water there is a concept of saturated saturated water saturated NaCl solution after a certain point NaCl will not get dissolved into water but there is no li such limit in ethanol water system or benzene ethane ether system you can mix them to an finite extent. So, miscibility is generally applicable to those terms those world is governed by similar to similar like dissolved like kind of aphorism and dictums generally takes care of those things at some level but of course they have some strong scientific foundations strong scientific mechanisms chemical mechanisms that can be examined by those who are relevant to those who are studying um, solvent systems various kind of solvent system or liquid state chemistry or the chemistry or the phase systems so those those are the part so basically i have covered this uh, this part this uh, solubility of salt into a solution the protoporotic solvent and this part which is more relevant to the people who are working in organic or biological chemistry biological chemistry that is relevant to them i will cover in a different lecture if you people call for it all right thank you